Hey guys, and for today's video, we are making one of my all-time favorite at-home comfort foods. Before we jump into the recipe, I would ask you to please give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel a lot, and it helps more people see my videos when I post them. So today, we are going to be making a chickpea pot pie. I am absolutely obsessed with how this recipe turned out. It's one of the recipes that I kind of made on a whim. I wasn't, I didn't have it on my content calendar as something that I wanted to make, but I was testing a vegan pie crust. And as I was doing it, I was noticing that the crust was like extra salty. I often use Earth Balance butter as well as the Miyoko's butter and they are just so salty. I don't understand why they are so salty and they don't sell an unsalted version most of the time that I've seen, which is really annoying. So if I'm making a blueberry pie, the salty crust is kind of weird. However, I was thinking for a, like a chicken pot pie version of it, it would be amazing. Naturally, I wanted to make it a vegetarian, so I really kind of just simply swapped all of the dairy elements for non-dairy, and then the chicken for chickpeas. I know that a pot pie kind of may seem intimidating, but I promise this one is super easy, and I'm gonna dive in and show you how to make it. First up, we're gonna make our vegan pie crust. You could use store-bought here, but I just like to make it homemade. Once you've done it a few times, it's super easy. We're gonna combine our dry ingredients, some flour and some salt, and a pinch of sugar if you would like, and then just pulse those a few times until it's nice and combined. Then we're gonna add in some very cold cubed butter. I'm using the Earth Balance butter here, but I've actually made this crust with several different plant-based butters, and they all worked well. Once your cubed butter is in there, we're going to then pulse it a few times and then add the rest of the butter. I like to cube the butter up when I'm prepping all of the ingredients and then place it in the freezer to get nice and cold while I'm waiting to use it. So yeah, put the rest of the cubed butter in there, kind of use your hands to break it up and make sure it's evenly distributed all around the flour and then pulse it until you end up with kind of like pea-sized bits of butter throughout the dough. Now we're gonna add in some ice cold water. It's really important that it's cold, ice cold. And we're going to sprinkle about four tablespoons to start out over the dough and then pulse that a couple of times. Typically I end up needing somewhere between six and eight tablespoons of the water. The dough is always gonna be crumbly, but you know it's ready. I kinda wanted to show it to you here. You know it's ready when you're able to grab a scoop, like a scoopful of it, and if you press it together, it kinda holds together like Play-Doh, that's when you know it's ready. So as you can see, like just like the tiniest bit of like pressing it together and it holds together nicely. So now I'm going to take all of that dough and dump it out, on, dump it out onto a clean surface so that I can kind of form everything together. Again, it's super crumbly. I've gotten a lot of comments before from people asking why it was so crumbly, but it's supposed to be this way. So I kind of just compact it together and press it a little bit so that it's starting to hold a form and then split it into two because this is going to make a top and a bottom crust. You don't have to use both of them if you don't want, but it makes two different crusts. So then I just do my best to like gather up all those extra crumbles and bits and nicely form them into two little discs. Then we're going to place plastic wrap around each of those dough balls and put them in the fridge for half an hour. You could do this for up to 24 hours, but it just needs about half an hour to set in the fridge. When you're ready to roll out the dough, we're going to unwrap it from the plastic and place it on top of a piece of parchment paper. Then I'm gonna take some extra flour and just kind of like sprinkle it on top of the dough all around my work surface, as well as on my rolling pin. I'm trying to make it so that I can transfer this very easily to the pie pan and make it so that nothing sticks. When I'm rolling out my dough, I just, to keep it simple, I just like roll a little and turn. I constantly turn the dough to try and get it in a nice circular shape so that it'll perfectly fit in my pie pan. Once it's nice and rolled out, I kind of just like go around the edges and make sure that there aren't any like big holes. And then I test to make sure that it's big enough by kind of placing my pie pan that I'm using over top of it. And then when you're ready, you can place the pie pan directly on it and then flip it over as you see here so that it's just kind of like easier to get it in the pie pan that way. And then we'll remove that parchment paper and then kind of just like form the dough into the pie pan, being careful as best you can not to break it. And then just kind of like push it into the pie pan. I'll then place that bottom pie crust into the fridge while I prepare my filling. 
To make the filling, we're gonna start out by melting some vegan butter in a large skillet. I use the Country Croc plant-based butter here, but really anything that you have, vegan butter, margarine works well. You could even use olive oil if you really want to, but I like the buttery flavor that we get here. Then we're gonna add in some onion and celery and saute that until it's nice and translucent before adding some salt pepper and flour. For the flour, I used all purpose, but if you want a gluten-free alternative, you could very easily use oat flour as well. Then a little bit at a time, we're going to stir in some plant-based milk, almond milk, really any unflavored milk works well here. And then we're going to pour in some broth and stir that until you get a nice and creamy sauce. So as you see, I used fresh vegetables in this recipe, the onion and the celery. However, if you don't have those on hand, you could easily either just leave them out. I really like both of these in this recipe, but you could leave them out. Or if you have a frozen version of them, I know that my sister-in-law often buys frozen diced onion, which I keep meaning to try just out of like pure laziness. And then I don't know if I've ever seen frozen celery. I don't think it freezes very well, but that's like just one of those things I always have, like extra celery sticks in the fridge. But it's another thing, if you don't have it, you can just leave it out, not a big deal. And then as you're gonna see in the next step that I'm about to show you, I used frozen vegetables as the remainder of the vegetables. And I just love how easy that makes. Because once you make the pie crust, which is pretty easy to make, like most of the work is done. It's just a matter of like combining all of the other elements in a skillet for just a few minutes and then plopping them into the pie crust. Once your sauce is mixed together and nice and creamy, we're gonna add in the canned chickpeas and the frozen vegetables. I did like a vegetable medley, but it didn't have green beans in it and I really wanted green beans in this. So I also added in some frozen green beans and then mixed everything together so that the vegetables, the chickpea, everything was fully coated in that like a really creamy and thick sauce. Then we're gonna pour this into the base of our pie crust. It's gonna feel like it's way too much and it's, it's it'll kind of be mounded in there, but that's okay, that's what you want. You're gonna roll out the top pie crust the same way we did with the bottom and then just kind of like invert it on top of your pie. Then cut off any excess dough around the edges and then kind of just like fold it in and crimp it together so that everything is kind of like sealed off around the edges. And then cut a couple holes in the top so that it could breathe and then baked it for about 45 minutes. So that's it, like super easy chickpea pot pie. I legit am so obsessed with how this recipe turned out. It's like one of the most comforting, just like home, homey recipes that I have on my blog. I really love it. I haven't tried freezing it yet, but one of the biggest memories I have growing up is my grandmother would often buy those like little frozen chicken pot pies and cook them. And so I keep thinking I would love to try freezing this so that I could just make a few of them at a time and then keep them in the freezer for just like easy meals later or as great meals to take to friends like new parents or if you've got like sick friends or whatever, anyone that you're wanting to take a meal to, I feel like this would be a really great one. All right, so that is it for today's video. As always, please hit that like and that subscribe button if you haven't already, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you for my next video.